Hello, everyone. It is my great honor to give an invited talk at this conference. My name is Guo Hai Chen. I'm a senior researcher at the CNT Application Research Center, AST Japan. My talk is entitled Neural Probes and Through Silicon Wheel Interposers Utilizing High Expert Ratio Carbon Nanotube Arrays. Please feel free to contact me through my email. What are the neural probes and interposer? The neural probe is an electrode used for recording or stimulation of neuron activities. It can be used to heal some movement disorder like Parkinson's diseases. Here is an example called Utah array implanted inside the brain. There are some potential issues. First, like mechanical mismatch between tissue and probe material which can cause tissue damage. Also, there are other critical structural requirements like high density, high expert ratio, and uniform spatial resolution. Interposer is a critical component in microelectronic packaging for high density 3D packaging. It's used to bridge between stacked components from fine pitch input output context to the coarse pitch package and the substrate. A through silicon VH interposer is the most common type using silicon as substrate and copper as a feeding material for high electrical conductivity pathway. Two important features for interposer, high electrical conductivity and the thermal expansion between silicon substrate and copper. With the devices become smaller and smaller, the reliability can be significantly affected by the CT mismatch between silicon and copper. The need for interposer materials with both high electrical conductivity and low CT is being increased. Carbon nanotubes have attracted extensive attention due to its exceptional properties. It's promising low dimensional, low dimensional material for many applications. The unique structure properties enable their superior applications as illustrated in this graph. In terms of neural probes, the carbon tubes are kind of soft, like over two orders of magnitude softer than silicon, choosing mechanical compatibility with the tissue. Carbon tubes also have a very high surface area, good sensitivity using lithography, it can be made with high density. In terms of interposer, its low CTE and good conductivity make carbon tubes perfect candidate for wear material. Plus, in cooperated with copper, the composite is compatible with the interface of current copper materials. However, some study using carbon tube as wears show their properties are still yet satisfied. Therefore, how to process the material into desired architecture represents an important step in utilizing their properties and applications. So what is the challenge? For low aspect ratio, direct growth of carbonated pillars is not difficult. The pillars can keep straight with good spatial resolution. However, as aspect ratio increases, direct growth of this freestanding component of pillar still maintaining the straightness becomes very challenging due to mechanical requirements. These are some published results. These are our preliminary results. The spending makes these pillars difficult to use due to the loss of spatial resolution. To overcome this systematic limitation, here is our approach. Our concept is very straightforward. Just like build a tall architecture, you need a support structure to make it stand straight. We first grew carbon to pillars with the help of support so the pillars can keep straight. When then we remove the support to get the freestanding straight carbon tube pillars. Using the patent catalyst by lithography, carbon tube pillars were growing by chemical vapor deposition. With the help of support, we can grow highly straight 
highly vertically well-ordered carbonatal peel arrays. They're about 1.2 mm tall with 40 micron in diameter. Initial aspect ratio is about 30 to 1. Next, we need to remove the support. We use a combination process. First, a non-directional plasma etching to remove the top part of the support, followed by carbon infiltration to strengthen the pillars, then a directional plasma etching to completely remove the bottom part of the support. This combination process resulted in the most efficient reproducible removal of carbon nanotube support. Here are the final freestanding carbon nanotube pillars. As you can see by these high resolution SEM images, the CT support was completely removed. This is the before as a wall structure we call the hatch, CT hatch, and after that they are completely removed. But the pillars are still maintained their good alignment and straightness. This is another sample. So the final um, carbonate pillars has a height about 1.2 millimeters, diameter about 20 micron. So the aspect ratio is a 6 to 1. It's very high. So the spacing is about from 100 to 400 micron, depending on the samples. We can still get uniform spacing by keeping the straightness. Next. I would like to present to diverse applications utilizing this porous carbonative structure. First is the CNT neural probe. Second is the carbonative copper composite through silicon via interposer. Please refer to our published articles for the details. The first application is the neural probe. To begin with, we check the functionality of the carbonative pillars as a neural probe. An individual probe was used to do this electrochemical response test using cyclic voltammetry. Here are the typical cyclic voltammetry curves of messy virology with its characteristic signature peaks, clearly shown. This result indicates the capability of carbon tube pillars to serve as electrochemical sensing probes. For neural sensing applications, we investigated the direct detection of doping using fast scan cyclic voltammetry. Here I show the current changes associated with the doping concentration. And here shows its signature peaks. This successful fast scan cyclic voltammetry demonstrated the capability of our carbonative pillars being used as neural probes. To apply our carbonate pillars to microelectrode array devices, it is necessary to evaluate the possibility of using microfabrication process to create the electrical connections that can individually address the probes. To do so, the carbonate pillars were grown on patent tungsten lines using the process integration with conventional lithography and thin film processes. The second application is through silicon via interposer. Here is a fabrication procedure. We use a simple bottom-up assembly approach to fabricate the interposer. First, patent carbonate pillars were synthesized and followed by homogeneously high-content copper electrodeposition. Meanwhile, a through silicon via wafer was prepared by conventional deep RIA process with closely matched size of holes. Then, the CNT CU pillars were inserted into the TSV substrate to form the interposer using a 3D manipulator. Here is the final product. Please visit the invited talk from my colleague, Dr. Sandram, for the details of copper electrode deposition. This is the final product. It's freestanding where all the vias. The vias were nicely filled, as can be seen in a close-up SEM image. The interposer was measured with high electrical conductivity, about half of the copper. In addition, we also measured its thermal expansion. 
Interestingly, the interposal shows a much lower CTE than copper, but very close to silicon. This close match of CTE can help improve the device lifetime by reducing the internal strain due to the CTE difference between the real material and silicon substrate. It is very important that the CNT assembly should possess a porous structure for copper deposition. Our supergrowth CNT forest can achieve a well-ordered, highly porous structure. Next, in order to maintain the shape of pillars and meet the vertical requirement for the later insertion process, a small amount of carbon coating was deposited to reinforce the forest structure. Then, a two-step copper electrodeposition process was used to deposit the copper into the CNT forest. After the first copper step, well-distributed copper seeds can be observed throughout the bulk of the pillars. Thanks to this uniform seeding, it provides the arrangement for uniform feeding of the remaining bulk and avoids the common problem of surface coating. This structural satisfaction enables the excellent properties of our CNT CU TSV interposer. As compared with other reports, our interposer ranks among the best combinations of electrical conductivity and CTE. Here I show some more details about the structural changes. First is the carbon reinforcement. We deposit a small and control the level of carbon coating to essentially glue the carbonate bundles, junctions, or the re reinforcement. We examined the change of the pillars after liquid process. As you can see, the pillar structure maintained very well with a suitable amount of carbon deposition. The next structural observation is after the first copper electrode deposition. Thanks to the highly porous CNT structure, well-distributed copper seeds throughout the bulk of the pillars were achieved, as shown here. The copper seeds uniformly and isolatedly deposited between the carbon and tubes, clearly evidenced by this SEM image and EDX results. After the second copper electrode deposition, as a result of the homogeneous copper seeding, we can achieve a uniform copper filling of the bulk of the pillars. Here is an open cross-sectional surface with SEM and EDX, clearly showing the uniformly and adequately deposited copper inside the pillar. Next, I would like to demonstrate several applications using the CNTCU TSV interposer. The first example, we use the two stacked interposers as a junction for delivering power to LED light display. Let me show you this video. This simple demonstration shows the basic functionality of electrical conduction in stacked chips in electronic devices. The second example highlights the high electrical conductivity and temperature tolerance by using the interposer as a power junction for an incandescent light bulb. The high power setting corresponding to a current density of about 4,000 ampere per square centimeter. And because of the high electric conductivity and small CTE mismatch, the power could be delivered without interruption or failure for over 200 days. This result demonstrates its high performance due to the high electric conductivity and low CTE mismatch. The other demonstration was a flexible interposer, which could be used in flexible wearable electronic devices. Instead of using silicon as the substrate material, we used the PDMS. We embedded the cumulative copper pillars into PDMS monomer. After curing, the embedded pillars were released from the gross substrate, creating a freestanding flexible interposer. These pillars were 20 microns in diameter and 20 microns spaced. Well, this example does not make use of the low CTE, but it does demonstrate an ability to be applied to non-planar surfaces. Now, let me summarize my talk. We 
the direct approach to overcome the synthetic limitations to fabric challenging structures, very high aspiration 6 to 1 freestanding combinative pillars. We demonstrated to diverse applications utilizing this uh, compoundless combinative structure. The CNT pillars are capable of acting as neural probes. In cooperation with the corporate electro deposition, we demonstrate the feasibility of CNT CU composite as a real material for TSV interposer, which should copper level electrical conductivity and the silicon level CT is where a significant decrease in CT mismatch with the silicon. Finally, I would like to thank our group members for their great support. Our colleagues thank the financial support listed here. At the end, thank you very much for your attention. Now I'm happy to answer your questions.